Hi, Priyanka. Hi. What are the challenges for enterprises adopting cloud native? Great question. I think there are many challenges. <laughs> Where should we begin? Um, so I have been part of the cloud native uh, ecosystem for many years now. I was part of this project called Open Tracing, which was the third project to join. And so I've kind of seen the ecosystem develop from the very beginning when Kubernetes Prometheus were the only things within uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation. And to now when there's 36 plus members and so many tiers of projects and so many vendors in the ecosystem, I'm sure you've seen that CNCF landscape, which is just teeming with logos. So I think that is the num first challenge that most enterprises face, which is so much information, so many things. Where do I begin? What do I do? Uh, and I'd say once they're there, uh, once they've started, you know, um, once they've made the sh shift from, let's say, um, their own on-prem servers to the cloud, even partially, they start seeing some really good value of developing on microservices so that developers are faster, more efficient. And the problem that comes along with that is that the operationalizing of that software is very different from the past where it was more monolithic. So when they come across that problem, then they are faced with this very vibrant ecosystem. And there's a question of like, what to choose, what to begin. There's like a little bit of confusion there. All of that is part of the larger strategy that most of these companies have of basically just shipping faster, right? Being more responsive to their customers. And going cloud native, it is, uh, Joining the cloud computing wave is good for them for many uh, operational reasons. Going cloud native is essentially about reducing cycle times. And so it effectively depends on how much can you empower your developers to be part of the whole DevSecOps life cycle and not just ship a feature, forget about it, right? And that, I think, conceptually, most enterprises have figured out, but in terms of reality combined with this problem of too many options and so much of what like new stuff happening every day plus the fact that even though people have internalized it they have not really made like ops teams are now called devops teams that's not the same thing as every developer being enabled right and i think that's the long journey everyone has to make and what is this tool chain crisis yes absolutely so as I was mentioning, with all these vendors, with all these projects, open source projects, there are many tools somebody can use. Once people start building on microservices, uh, small teams of developers start shipping independently, which is great. Um, and then they run into the operational problems I was just discussing. When that happens, if these teams are empowered, which they often are, and that's a good thing, they'll quickly choose the tool that makes sense for the specific problem at hand. Now, that's great for this micro experience. However, multiply that by 10, 100,000 teams, and suddenly you have that many tool chains, right? And what that means is that every team is in a box of its own, and it cannot, it doesn't know when the other team, when, what another team is working on, when they're done with what they're doing, and when it's time to you know, take over and do their own bit. So there's a lot of op opacity that comes with this fragmented tool chains. And I think that tool, this kind of crazy situation is what the tool chain crisis is because without awareness of how to collaborate amongst teams, without awareness of um, where problems lie in the macro view, and without guardrails that are across the organization, you're actually unempowering developers and slowing things down. And the cost is really high because it's, you know, like you can, people when they have these systems, they can have, like they can add like days, mo weeks, months of sort of friction time to their, um, to their operations. And that always directly translates to being slower to release. And what do developers really need to go cloud native? Great question. I think developers need to be truly empowered, which is different from understanding the concepts of cloud native. I think we need to go beyond uh, ops teams being called DevOps teams, um, and really think about how can every developer be involved. From our perspective at GitLab, right, we started as open source version control. And then now, uh, over time, we developed uh, a single application with uh, CI, CD, security, planning, all the whole single application of the entire DevSecOps lifecycle. And what we've seen is we started very 
that's firmly in the dev part of the world. And if people bring in the operations workflows into the developer workflows using Git, using CICD and like connecting the dots so that they don't have to like you know go from this tool to that tool which is maybe a little foreign to them they're going to do really well so it is imperative i think that every developer be able to deploy to their own kubernetes cluster with the guardrails that are important to the company but everyone should have that access they should feel comfortable and that way they truly all shift left and uh, you know reap rewards for the company great thanks so much for your insights today thank you for having me